morning, FBC family and friends. Uh, it's great to have you here with us on uh, another service here on YouTube, which, uh, if I'm being honest, is going to be one of the last ones because we are so close. Uh, I am back in the building again. Uh, I'm not just trying to dress like a lumberjack or something like that, which I feel like with this shirt and the hard hat on. Uh, but we are close. We're getting so close to being in this building. I'm actually in another room that I was last week just because I wanted to mix it up. Uh, might not look any different to you because it's just the same color wall behind me, but I'm in a different room. I'm in one of the classrooms uh, that we're going to be using uh, on the outside wall. And again, you probably might have been able to see this if you ever, I'm not saying you should have, but if you ever were uh, coming up to the building, look, peeking in the windows, you might have peeked inside this room. Uh, this room is completely done uh, and it's looking great. We've got uh, accent walls uh, throughout the building. They're all up and, and they look fantastic. And uh, the flooring is basically done. Uh, all the baseboards are down and uh, just basically waiting for the stage flooring and uh, the media loft flooring and then putting up the trim there. And then that's, that's it for those touches. Uh, the painting is almost done. I uh, just got to do a few touch ups in some spots or second coats in a few spots, but we're getting there. We're so close and uh, I can't wait to have you be able to come into this building and tour around and, and see it. Uh, we do have a few dates uh, in mind right now that we are hopefully gonna be able to do a tour in our first service, but they're tentative dates right now because things could happen or things could change. So we don't have any set dates, but we do have dates in mind. So we are getting to the point where we are looking at what days we will be able to be in here and have other people and have you come and check it out. So once we get to that point, once we, we are planning to do uh, like an open house with a guided tour um, that people can come by and they'll get a certain amount of time, um, we have a date in mind. So we'll keep, uh, you know, keep your eye on weekly updates for that or, or maybe the service next week. We might have a better idea of exactly if we can do it on a certain day and uh, we'll keep you informed and then it'll be a registration process and you'll pick a time slot. Um, and you know, you'll have a certain amount of time to walk through the building and someone will show you and tell you everything that's going on and what's going where and who's doing what and everything. Um, so we're looking forward to having that opportunity to show off the building and have you come and check it out. Uh, and again, keep your eye on the weekly updates, uh, the messages, uh, the website, uh, fbctilsonberg.com. We'll have that information as well and where you can register or you will register on the website. So it's coming along. We're almost there. Um, just we'll keep you uh, posted with updates um, and I'm just excited so uh, also Pastor Steve is going to have something uh, a little bit more information for you for uh, the month of December for our Advent season uh, doing uh, the, the Root of Jesse uh, the, the Jesse Tree uh, daily devotions that we're going to be doing as a congregation uh, he's going to have some more information for you on that later in the service um, and I'm excited uh, and looking forward to being able to, to doing that and walking through that as a congregation, as, as everyone on a daily basis throughout the month. And uh, I'm sure we'll be having a Christmas Eve service here. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we will be here for a Christmas Eve service, which is going to be exciting as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, just keep your eyes peeled and ears open for more information coming out uh, about the building what's going on and i'm looking forward to seeing you all again in person so uh, have a, a great day and have a great week god bless
clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. You lay the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride on the wings of the wind. You set the earth on its foundations. It will not be moved. Before we get to our uh, cartoon again today, I just did want to remind everyone again of uh, Doe Holy Night and the opportunity to register um, and maybe just explain it again one last time for those that are still maybe unsure of what it is. So uh, like we did in the summer with Tilsonburg VBS, we are going to be delivering a kit to you um, and it's going to be this coming Saturday, December the 5th, and it's going to have everything you need to bake a batch of cookies. And there's going to be a link to a video that you can watch and we'll walk you through step by step. So even if you aren't a baker or if you don't know really your way around the kitchen, it should be pretty straightforward. Everything's going to be pre-measured um, and put into little cups and baggies and whatever it is that we're going to be doing. Uh, you might need to crack an egg, but if you got to pick the shells out, I'm sure it'll be okay. Just don't bake them with the shells in. And... Uh, It'll have everything you need to walk through uh, and, and a, a Christmas message as well in that video. And registration closes on December 1st, so this coming Tuesday. Uh, please be registered if you want to take part in that. And we'll have a, a package sent out to you again next Saturday. And then you can do that anytime you want. You don't have to do it this coming Saturday, uh, but you do have to you know, maybe store like the mark or the butter and the eggs and things like that in, in the fridge. Uh, but anytime you want, you can get together with your family, with your children, and you can uh, bake those cookies and uh, and then, I mean, you can eat them <laughs> whenever you want as well. So uh, that's what's going on. Have to register by December 1st, and then we're bringing those kits to you on December 5th. So that's what's going on. Again, you can register at TilsonbergVBS.com and uh, follow the steps that are there. And then just please do that by December 1st if you would like to, to participate in that. So uh, enjoy the cartoon. Uh, we're going to look at Samson and Delilah today. It's, a, it's a, an incredible story. Um, and I'm sure you're going to like it. So God bless. Stories of the Bible. Samson and Delilah. This is Samson. Hey. Who was the last judge of Israel. Samson was very strong, and he was supposed to bring God's people victory over their enemies, who were the Philistines. Now Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Oh, hey there. Hi, hi. And the Philistines came to Delilah and convinced her to find out what the secret to Samson's strength was. Hmm. They promised her a great amount of money if she could do this. Now you're coming. Hey. Come in. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what would it take to tie you up securely? Well... Samson replied, 
If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dropped, I would become as weak as anyone else. You ain't here. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings. <laughs> Look what I got. Go on, try. And she tied Samson up with them. Ha <laughs> ha, see? Hello, Samson. She cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings. Let me at him. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Hey, wait a minute. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Eh, uh, all right. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> Let me try. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. See? Oh, no. And again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. What? Where? Let me at him. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? All right, I'll tell you. Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with a loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> now he got him. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. <laughs> Again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Ah, let me at him. But Samson woke up and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. You gotta be kidding me. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? Hey, come on. No. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. All right, all right. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, you. So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned. Oh, Samson. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep. Psst. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. Samson's strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. <laughs> when he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. Oh, wh what's going on? But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and took him to prison. Near me, Lord 
Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. For our prayer time this morning, uh, it's going to be a lot of the same as what it was last week. Uh, the same uh, people um, that are, were dealing with issues uh, last week and then the previous weeks are still dealing with those issues, recovery and healing and um, whatever it is, uh, Gary Hunt, Carl Jones, Bev Pipe, uh, and Ron Hatton, there's a, there's a few others as well. Uh, those are the main ones that we know of um, that, uh, that are they're having some issues and they're, they're having some things that they need to uh, recover from or have upcoming um, surgeries or, or this or that. So uh, we'll be remembering that in prayer. And then we also just this building, just the continuation um, that everything goes smoothly, that, the, the, that all of the, the finishing touches get done um, in a timely manner. Um, actually, Rick Young and Dave Thompson are, are here right now uh, putting up the shelving for the library. So. Um, we're getting close to, to being done again, so we can continue to pray for those things that everything gets finished uh, as it should, um, and uh, just that, that, that everything goes smoothly. So uh, we will remember these things in prayer, and let's, let's go to God in prayer now. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this day that you've given to us. We thank you that, uh, again, that we are, are, we are here now, that we have, uh, this, this point in time where we are, where um, after all these years of, of work and planning and preparation uh, of, to getting to the point where this building is, is open, um, that we are here, that we are so close to this point where the building is open. We just thank you so much for, for all of the hard work with so many individuals that have gone into this building over the years, for the workers that have been here uh, for the last number of months, for the last year putting this building up. Uh, doing all the work inside the building. We thank you so much for them, and we just pray that you would bless them all. And uh, as, as we are getting so close, I just pray that you would continue to uh, be with the workers, that uh, all the finishing touches would go on uh, as, as planned, um, and that uh, things would just uh, come together and that everything would uh, go smoothly, that all the final walkthroughs and everything that needs to get signed off would, uh, would go well, and that uh, as, as we've kind of planned, that, uh, that, that we would get into this building. So um, we just pray that your will be done here, God, and that, uh, that we would just be able to, to get into this building so that we can start using it to reach out to the community um, and, and invite the community in as well. And uh, that this uh, will hopefully be a light in this area, uh, in this part of town. So uh, God, we just pray that you'd continue to bless the, the work being done. And uh, we think of uh, those, those names that were mentioned, Ron, Bev, uh, Gary, uh, Carl, and, and others that we know of that, um, that have had surgeries or have some upcoming or that are uh, in ongoing treatments or whatever that people are dealing with, God. I know that, uh, that, there, are, that there are a few there that, that are needing some healing, um, that maybe have uh, some nerves. I uh, just pray that you would... Uh, just be with them there, bring them peace, uh, bring uh, healing and uh, comfort to uh, the family members as well. And uh, just pray that you would just be with those uh, that are that are hurting in our congregation. Also, as we are heading into uh, this this winter season, as, as we're now um, just a, a day away or two days away from December, and, and as uh, the days are, are much shorter and it's darker and then snow is coming, God, we know that um, along with all of the other issues that are going on this year, that there's the, the seasonal depression that can happen as well, God. So I just pray uh, that those individuals that have been uh, isolating and that haven't been able to, to have the, the contact that they've had in the past, I pray that you would just help them to, uh, to, to feel loved, uh, to feel um, not alone. Uh, I pray that you would be with them, that you make themselves, uh, make yourself known to them, and that uh, others would come alongside of them as well, even if it's just 
over the phone or, or Facebook or, or whatever it is, um, or even just sending a note in the mail, anything, God, that, that uh, we can stay connected and that people can uh, fight through this season because it, it will, uh, I'm sure, be a difficult season ahead for, for many people. So I just pray that you would help us uh, as a congregation to to, to keep our, our, our family, uh, to the sense of family, um, to, to continue to be with one another uh, as much as we can, whether in person or not. And uh, I just pray that you would uh, just help us in, in this season ahead. And uh, yeah, we just pray that you do that for us, God. Again, we thank you uh, for this day. Uh, we thank you for, again, just the fact that here I am in this building and I'm able to record and I just pray um, for, for all the work that's being done uh, today and, and going forward um, until we are all in here in this place worshiping and fellowshipping together. So again, we thank you and we praise you and we pray all these things in your son's wonderful and holy name. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm glad that we can join together and spend some time in God's Word, that we can join together in worship and prayer, as we have been with these online services throughout 2020. And I've got to say, 2020 has been a year to remember, uh, maybe a year that we all want to forget. But the interesting thing is this year has uh, made us face some new realities. We have had to adapt to a lot of new things. Uh, this year has even given us a few new terms and words that we'd never used before. Uh, one of the terms that we're all very familiar with right now, whether we like it or not, is the term social distancing. It's this idea of keeping distance between us and others so that we don't spread a virus or sickness. Uh, we've learned a term like self-isolation, and this is the idea of uh, avoiding contact with people if you suspect that you might have illness. Uh, another interesting one that I came across, and in fact, we have one of these in our home, is this word coronial. That is a generation of kids born during COVID. Uh, one of the most fascinating ones that I've, I've heard is this word, it doesn't need a lot of explaining, it's the word COVIDiot. And I'll let you figure that one out for yourself. But I think the most fascinating one for me today that I wanna to point out for us is this word doom scrolling. It's this word that describes when you obsessively scroll through your news on your smartphone or your computer, and you get an endless feed of negative news. It's something that affects your mental health. It brings you down when you spend time obsessively scrolling through this news. It's called doom scrolling. And it seems as though this year of 2020 has not offered us anything really good. Uh, even all of these new terms that we're given don't give us any real hope. They don't give us anything positive. So today I wanna to share a message of hope with you. Today I wanna to start a journey to Christmas with all of you, a journey that will hopefully reveal to all of us, amid all the doom and gloom that's so easy to sink into, that we can have a firm foundation for hope if we look in the right place. And so to start this journey, I wanna take you to a book of the Bible, a book that you may have found kind of confusing at times, a book that was written about 2,600 years ago in the Old Testament uh, by the prophet Isaiah. And maybe you've read through the 66 chapters of this book and you've struggled to make sense of the whole book. Uh, but let me just kind of distill it down to its most basic uh, purpose and meaning. Uh, the book of Isaiah might seem like a doom scrolling with all that was wrong in the world in Isaiah's day. Uh, Isaiah writes this prophecy at a time where their king, King Uzziah, had just died. They had enemies at their borders, countries like Assyria and uh, Lebanon and Egypt and all these enemies of the people of Israel were at their borders ready to pounce at any moment. Yet, if we read patiently in the book of Isaiah, we find in the midst of all this doom scrolling, messages of hope, prophecies that point to a special person that would come on the scene and deliver the people of Israel from all that ailed them, all that gave them a sense of doom and dread. God had something in plan for them, a special king that would come on the scene. And so we read in Isaiah chapter 10, to kind of give a bit of context to today's message, where it says this, Behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will lop off the bow with terror. Those of high stature will be hewn down, and the haughty will be humbled. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, 
and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. You see, man in his sin and pride stood tall, uh, but God brings his judgment. And in God's judgment, all the proud are brought low like trees in a freshly felled forest. Uh, It's a powerful image. It's a very stark image. It's really a, a hopeless image from a human perspective. You know, in this year of 2020, we've seen the leveling of many things that once stood proud. Uh, once mega churches now sit empty. Once highly praised and famous pastors are being exposed in scandal. Uh, some of the most famous celebrities and athletes are now without work. Our faith in our finances and healthcare and technology, all of this has been weighed and found wanting. All that once stood proud has been brought to its knees. Uh, even today, literally, as we're looking at this prophecy, even Lebanon lies in ruins physically, politically, economically, the brightest minds fleeing that country. Uh, This is our world today, and that was the world in Isaiah's day. Uh, But even in times of judgment, God still gives hope to his people. And that's the beautiful thing about the book of Isaiah. In the midst of all this doom and gloom, there is a glimmer of hope. And so I wonder if you've ever been left in a place in life where you looked around and you felt like everything you'd ever done was a dead end. Uh, Every dream had failed. Everything you worked at really hard had dried up. Uh, Relationships had left you high and dry. You felt lost and without hope. You looked at your life and it looked like a a felled forest with no hope. And so I wonder if you're feeling like that right now. Uh, If so, I am really glad that you're here with us today because I want to share a message of hope with you from Isaiah. I want to show you where it gets better. I find it amazing that God gives us glimpses of himself in the natural world. Uh, And I think he does this so we can pause and appreciate his sovereignty and his dominion and his creativity. Uh, One such example happened for me uh, in my backyard this past summer. You know, several years ago, we planted this peach tree in our garden. We were excited to grow it and maybe get some fruit off of it. So I let it grow for a couple of years, but I was really annoyed that for many years, it didn't bud or grow any fruit. Uh, It was useless. So I cut it down. I chopped it down thinking, I don't want to be disappointed anymore. And maybe I'll put something more useful, a a better kind of plant in that place. Uh, But within a couple of months, I noticed something interesting growing from this little stump that I had leveled to the ground, a little shoot. A shoot was coming up from that, what I thought was a dead tree. And it started to grow and grow and grow by uh, many feet over the next year. Uh, This past summer, I noticed something really interesting. One by one, little buds started to appear on the branches of this newly grown or regrown peach tree. Uh, Little, what I think they're called bobules of fruit, just starting to appear and form. And finally, I went out one day and I realized that this tree was full of little tiny peaches. And so uh, (laughs) every week we would look at it and notice as these peaches were growing and growing that there would be fewer and fewer as the squirrels and chipmunks had their way with it. Until finally one day, I went out to uh, check how many peaches were left. I think it was sometime in September. And there was one peach left, one ripe peach out of this whole season of growing. And so I plucked it with care. Uh, I brought it in the house and I called everyone together because this was special. And I cut it into six pieces so that each of us and our family could have a taste of this one precious peach. And boy, was it sweet. It was good. It was a, a beautiful, tiny little peach that gave us a sense of hopefulness and a, a sense of uh, joy in, this, in the sense that this plant, which we thought was once dead, was now bearing some kind of sweet fruit for us. And so in today's message, we're looking at a passage of scripture that tells a very similar kind of story. We find here in Isaiah chapter 11, a powerful picture of hope for God's people amid the doom and the chaos of the world. Uh, in this landscape of stumps, there is a shoot from a root. And the Lord is looking over this field of stumps and he gives the people of God hope in causing this shoot to grow out of one of them. And so it says in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, these words, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. So first of all, we're asking, who is this Jesse? Who is this Jesse person that Isaiah is referring to? Why is Jesse so important? 
Well, when we look at the biblical story, we find out that Jesse is the grandson of Ruth and Boaz. Remember Ruth doing that trip from Moab to go with Naomi to her people? Uh, Jesse is the grandson of Ruth and Boaz. Uh, he's the father of King David. And we don't know too much about Jesse, but the most notable moment in Jesse's life is when he's summoned by the prophet Samuel to bring his sons because a new king will be chosen. And so Jesse is summoned. He brings his sons with him so that a king could be anointed. Yet his youngest son, David, was out tending to his sheep. He was a, a young shepherd boy. And so David's older brothers, these uh, taller, handsome uh, more capable young men stood to be anointed as king, but Samuel knew that there was one missing. And sure enough, Samuel asked, and David was called in from the fields, probably smelling like sheep. And Samuel knew by the Spirit of God that David was to be that king, that anointed king. And so Samuel anointed David that day as the king who would take over the throne of Israel. And there was a special promise that Samuel made, a, a prophecy that Samuel proclaimed over David. He said this, Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. You see, this was a, a binding promise, a binding promise of God. And as I shared last week, when God makes a promise, when he makes a covenant, uh, he never breaks his covenant. He is always true and faithful to his word. Uh, even when the situation looks bleak, uh, God never backs out on his promises. And so God is making a promise through Samuel here that there will always be a king in the throne of David, that there will always be that promise of uh, a leader over the people of God. And God is not going to break this promise. And so what does this image of this shoot in Isaiah point to? What does this shoot from the root point to? Uh, this image points to the promise of another king, a king who would come in the line of Jesse. And interestingly, when we flip to the, the New Testament, when we look in Matthew and Luke, we find some genealogies. And we learn from the genealogies of Jesus, his family line, his family tree, that Jesse is in that family tree. Uh, we learn that um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, descended from the line of David, and so did Joseph, uh, which is why he had to return to the city of David, the city of Bethlehem, to participate and be counted in the census. So after a thousand years from the time of David, uh, the line of David was down to just a few lowly peasants uh, scattered throughout Judea. But the promise of God still applied to the situation. It looked really bleak because all that was left were a few descendants, kind of um, not really well-known people in a few scattered places. But God's promise still applied that through the line of Jesse, there would be a king, a, an everlasting king, and bring hope to the people of God. And so what looked like a seemingly hopeless situation for Israel, what looked like a, a field of dead stumps, was going to be a sprout from the tree of Jesse, a spring, a little shoot that would give hope for the future, a baby that would be born in the city of David, a child who would grow to become the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so what would this Messiah be like? What would this shoot from the root look like? Well, I love the way that Isaiah describes this shoot from the root in the scriptures here in his prophecy. Uh, he's described here in verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 11. And we could look at the whole book of Isaiah, but I just want to spend time to get a microscope and look at just one verse, Isaiah 11, verse 2. And we're going to see uh, within this one simple verse, seven qualities of this shoot from the root, this Messiah, this Jesus who would come on the scene. And it says this in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, it says this, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> this shoot from the root, Jesus, is more alive and vital than this whole forest of trees uh, because the spirit of God fills him. It's the spirit of God who fills this Messiah, this shoot from the root, this Jesus, completely. Uh, this power of the spirit is in this passage, interestingly, sevenfold. There's seven attributes of the filling of the Spirit in this Messiah's life, in Jesus's life. And I want to look at those with you today, just really quickly. 
these seven attributes of the Spirit. It says, firstly, that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Uh, Consider this for a minute. How many of us long as followers of Jesus to be filled with the Holy Spirit? to keep in step with the Spirit, to develop the fruit of the Spirit, to exercise the gifts of the Spirit. What we long to experience in a growing way, Jesus had in the fullest way. All of this was in fullness in the life of Jesus because the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him completely. Secondly, this second part of this sevenfold filling of the Spirit is that Jesus, this shoot from the root, had a spirit of wisdom, has a spirit of wisdom. Jesus is supremely wise in all things. Uh, In his ministry among us, he displayed his depth of divine wisdom, even from a young age. Remember when he sat in the temple courts with the Pharisees and they were wowed by his wisdom at such a young age. It was those same Pharisees who were in awe of him in his childhood that would then persecute him in his adulthood. And in every moment, every interaction with them, he would get the best of the situation. He would come out the clear winner because of the wisdom that he had upon him. He had divine wisdom to silence his opponents. He had divine wisdom to clear up the confusion in people's lives with one word or one action. Uh, In James chapter 1, you and I are told that when we lack wisdom, we are to ask God for it. And God will give it graciously to us. We can have wisdom because of our relationship with Christ. He is willing to give that to us because he has it in abundance. The third aspect of this filling of the spirit that Jesus has is that he has a spirit of understanding. Jesus understands all things. He understands everything. Uh, Hebrews states to us that Jesus uh, is our great high priest and he has endured all the things that we would go through. He can sympathize with us in our struggles and our weaknesses because he himself endured those things. He experienced them to the fullest degree. Uh, Jesus came to breathe our air. He, He walked our earth. He experienced the joy of holding a child and the sting of betrayal and the uh, pain of even death. Jesus experienced all those things. He understands you and I completely. Next, we find in Jesus a spirit of counsel. Did you know that Jesus is the perfect counselor? In fact, in Isaiah chapter 9, a few chapters before, Jesus is described as a wonderful counselor. You know, uh, human's counsel, uh, man's counsel is only limited. As a pastor, I might refer people to a professional Christian counselor, but Jesus proved in his ministry that he was the ultimate counselor. He knew things about people that they kept hidden from the world. He could see right through people and know the hidden things of the heart. Uh, Think about it for a moment. If if people knew every secret about you, would they still treat you the same? Would they look at you the same? But Jesus does. He knows everything about you, and he pours out his love for you. He knows every secret, every sin. He knows every unmet longing, every hope that you have in your heart, uh, all the dreams and the hopes that you hold. He knows what you need, and he speaks truthfully to you. He is there to correct you when you wander and comfort you when you are in pain. Jesus is a perfect counselor. Fifthly, we see that Jesus has within him the spirit of might. Uh, You know, many people can lend us a helping hand, but they can only go so far on the strength that they have. Uh, Jesus, on the other hand, is inexhaustible. Uh, Many people, you know, have a desire to help, but they lack the means to do uh, anything significant. Uh, Other people might have the means to help us, but they simply don't care. But in Jesus, we find this perfect mix and this perfect uh, balance of strength and the deepest love for us. He's able to help and he wants to help. In 2 Corinthians, we read this wonderful promise that when we lack strength, when we lack the ability to do anything, God's power, the power of Christ, is made perfect in our weakness. In Philippians chapter 4, another promise that we can do all things through him who gives us strength. That him is Jesus, this shoot from the root, this one who is endowed with a spirit of strength. Next in these seven attributes of the spirit that is in Jesus the Messiah is the spirit of knowledge. Jesus knows the truth because he is the truth. 
Uh, Jesus knows the way because he is the way. Uh, Jesus knows God's will because he is literally the word of God made flesh dwelling among us. Uh, He knows the subjective things of our hearts, and he knows the objective facts of the reality around us. Uh, I love that uh, that Psalm 16 says these words, that he makes known to us the path of life where there's fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore. Jesus knows all things. He's got the path of life for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can trust in his knowledge uh, when we don't know the way, when we don't know what the road of life will hold for us. We can trust in his knowledge, and he will never lead us astray. On Jesus is the spirit of knowledge. We continue on in these attributes of Jesus, and we find this final one, this seventh one, And remember, folks, when we find the word or the number seven in the scriptures, it's the number of perfection. On Jesus was this perfect indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And this final quality was the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You know, in especially uh, troubled times like these, we need to remember that the only fear that we are to have as children of God is the fear of God. Uh, Fear not in our circumstances, not fear of man, not a fear of the future, not a fear of failure or death. The only good kind of fear is a fear of God. And this doesn't mean being terrified or running and and being terrified of God. It means a deep, reverent awe and respect, a reverence for God that leads us to worship Him and ascribe to Him all the worth that He is due. It's not a fearfulness, it's a reverence that we have for God. And Jesus showed this as He walked this world with us. He was fully obedient to God the Father. He lived in full obedience and reverence and respect and dependence upon God the Father. He did it all with perfection. And Jesus showed us through his actions this gold standard of what it means to live a life that honors God. And we are to follow that pattern if we want to honor God our Father. Folks, this is Jesus Christ. This is the Messiah. This is the shoot from the root of Jesse. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And I want you to think about who Jesus is, what he has done, and what he offers to all of us who receive him as our king, as the Lord of our lives. You know, you and I definitely, at times like these, especially in 2020, lack this fullness of the Spirit. We lack wisdom. We lack understanding. We lack counsel and might and knowledge. And we're often filled with a fear of the world rather than a fear of God. What we need right now is exactly what Jesus has, and he has it in full abundance. Uh, When we call upon him, when we receive him, we receive these things in our lives. If Jesus is the Lord and Savior of our life, all these things are promises for us too. If we desire to be filled with these spiritual qualities, we need to come to the Lord who exhibited them perfectly and wants to give these good things to us. And so, folks, just like in Isaiah's day with the widespread turmoil that they had, the political uncertainty, the fear of death, and the fear of man, in the midst of all of this, the people of God were to look to God's promises for hope, hope that would be found in Jesus. You see, when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, all of these promises, these prophecies of Isaiah were fulfilled beautifully. And while Isaiah looked forward to the time that Jesus would come at his first coming, you and I today look forward to the second coming of Jesus, a time in which his eternal kingdom was going to be established here on earth. And just as the people of Israel in their gloom looked forward to the coming of Christ, so do you and I today. And if if Isaiah could speak today, I believe his message would be much the same to us. Here in 2020, he would say, look out for that shoot from the root. In the midst of what looks like a felled forest, May you have eyes to see that hopeful shoot that is Jesus Christ. So in a fallen world, folks, may the hope of Jesus' return fill you with a sense of joy. May his indwelling presence in you today produce all of these spiritual qualities that he has present in his life. Because you are a follower of his, because you're a child of God, may you have these qualities growing in your life. Now, in closing today, this Christmas, I I want to invite you to do something special with me and with our whole church family. Uh, Each day of December, starting this Tuesday, December the 1st, I want you to uh, join together daily in doing something that is called the Jesse Tree. 
Uh, this Jesse tree thing that we're doing comes right out of this passage that we're looking at today. And I know that this winter, especially this winter where COVID has really brought us all to a very low place, we all need a good measure of hope. We all need a, a sense of joy for each new day, hope for the future. And so instead of doom scrolling on your phone or your computer, uh, we're going to do some what I call hope scrolling. I want us to fill up Facebook uh, with our reflections, our pictures, our thoughts, our testimonies of how we're finding new hope in our walk with Jesus. So in your church email, on our website, on Facebook, and also on Instagram, you're going to find ways to connect with the Jesse tree this Christmas and participate with others in finding new hope in this season ahead. So I hope starting this Tuesday, December the 1st, that you'll join with us to participate in this Jesse tree and find some hope in this shoot from the root. May God bless you today. Let's take a moment to pray together. Let's do that. God, we thank you so much for your abundant blessing to us. We thank you that you love us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you sent your son Jesus into this world, that you fulfilled your promise through King David and his father Jesse, that there would be a king on the throne. And boy, did we ever get an amazing uh, king in you, Lord Jesus, the ultimate king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You have given to us hope for the future with your first coming and now the anticipation of your second coming that is prophesied throughout your new covenant, the New Testament. We look forward to that day, Lord Jesus, when we can welcome you into uh, this realm of our world as our king over all things, where darkness and gloom will be dissipated, where sin and darkness and death and pain will be no more where we welcome you in the fullness of your reign over us, Lord Jesus. Lord, give us hope for the season ahead. Help us to hold on to you with everything that we got. Lord, we know that you will not disappoint us. In your precious name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Sadness and he shared within our glass. 